So, physical security and uh, on to security guards. Um, I suppose that's what people first think about uh, when we're talking about physical security. But uh, there are a number of aspects there. Um, once again, uh, in terms of security guards and, and uh, what is it that you want out of uh, physical security and, and security guard uh, services. Um, there, there can be various objectives here. Um, there is, for example, uh, things like access control. Um, we'll have the security guard uh, maintaining visitor logs. Uh, and uh, so we have, uh, you know, some at least a record of uh, accesses. So some form of, of access control there. Um, we've got... Uh, uh, possible areas of protection um, that is uh, it, it should not be over emphasized because security guards are not police uh, and that is a, a very common misconception um, there are uh things the police can do that security guards just simply can't uh, and you have to be careful what you're expecting your security guard force to be doing what actions uh, they're performing and as I say um, very often the primary uh, objective of having a security guard for is simply deterrence. Having a physical, visible presence. Now the uh, usually you'll have uh, guards doing rounds, checking stations, uh, just checking for whatever um, they can observe to ensure uh, or try and ensure that you're catching, detecting uh, any untoward events. But uh, it's... Again, um, <laughs> you know, what do you have the guards do? And there, is, there are site orders that you write out, um, instructions for the guards. Uh, and it, in a sense, a kind of policy. Uh, it's, it's possibly more like procedures, but, you know, what is it that you want them to actually do? Um, there are situations where uh, you don't necessarily want the security guards reporting to the police. Uh, I can remember one site where even if a fire broke out, the standing orders, site orders for the guards um, definitely stated that they were to call the plant manager before they were to call the fire department if a fire broke out. So, you know, um, you, you do have to uh, pay attention to all these aspects. Uh, think of this in advance. You know, it's not as simple as, uh, as many do, simply calling up a security guard company company that provides security guard services uh, and say you know send us over a couple of big guys um, 
you, you've got to put more thought into it. So, uh, the guard station or desk placement. Um, I remember uh, one site where the uh, security guard station, they were in charge of access for a gate. Unfortunately, when they were seated at their desk, um, they could not see the actual gate and, and who was waiting at the gate uh, to determine whether or not they should be letting them in. Uh, there was another uh, security guard station, I recall. Um, the security guard had to be uh, behind the desk in order to open the door for anybody who came to uh, the office after hours. Unfortunately, the uh, desk was, you know, 30 feet away from the door, and immediately inside the door was the stairway, unsecured, up to a very highly secured area. So, um, you know, you, there are certain things that need to be thought of in this. Um, again, I've, I've mentioned, uh, uh, do you hire your own guards or do you contract them? If, if you contract them, you know, just remember, they are not your employees. Um, why should they care about your company? Uh, don't expect them to, to be uh, putting extra effort in, into that uh, for you. Um, yeah, just, uh, you know, it, it seems a simple thing. Well, to most people who don't know what the job entails, it, it does seem a sim simple thing. And unfortunately, even for those of us who <coughs> are working in information security, um, we don't have an awful lot of background in physical security and particularly in security guard situations. And it is, uh, you know, uh, it has some aspects to it that are not necessarily immediately obvious. So, put some thought into it. Uh, it's not just a matter of calling the security guard for us and send over a couple of guys.